After competing twice and despite winning the second event, my antweight combat robot, Yellow and Dangerous, had revealed its weaknesses and was due for a full redesign. First, we should begin with a review of the current version. The TPU chassis held up well to hits, with the largest gashes being dealt by myself during testing against a draft print, and shebang when my back was turned in rumble. The weapon system itself worked alright too, with some big hits being dealt. Magnets tended to break, but there wasn't much to do about that apart from more shielding of the magnet ring with the weapon itself. The Grade 5 Titanium had taken a decent beating just from two events, so it would be good to move up to a hardened steel, if possible, to match the weapons of my opponents. Apart from material changes, really all the weapon needed was a bit more bite. This leads us to the final aspect, the drive system. This was the most glaring issue in the whole bot. I kind of knew this from the very beginning, as even in the test box driving was slow, seemed to drive best in reverse, and slowed down further as the weapon spun up. So much so, that it soon reached a point where the bot would push itself backwards off of just the weapon vibrations. Being a design solely based around the big stick mentality, I originally wasn't too fussed about this, but seeing the speed others were reaching with the same motors, I really wanted to get to the bottom of it. Thus began a long series of troubleshooting. Eventually I deduced that at least part of the issue was to do with the distribution of weight. I'm still not entirely sure what exactly was happening, but most of the tests I could think of and perform safely at home had yellow and dangerous driving fine, however the drop in speed made itself apparent as soon as I properly mounted the weapon at the front. Seeing this, I decided to try something that I've only ever seen on one or two other mid-cutter horizontal spinners, a four-wheel drive setup. It might seem like adding a bunch of chassis to put another set of wheels on would be going against the entire big stick ideology of Yellow and Dangerous. However, improving the drive speed and handling not only will let me capitalize on disoriented opponents so I can chain multiple hits together, but also actually make my weapon more effective. This is because a spinner's effectiveness mainly rests on two different metrics. One is stored kinetic energy, which, if we refer back to high school physics, is affected by mass and velocity, or in our case, speed of rotation, where kinetic energy increases with the square of speed. More important than the mass, though, is how that mass is arranged. Thus we arrive at moment of inertia. This is basically inertia, but for things that are rotating. So, if inertia is higher, then the material we're hitting will have a harder time stopping or redirecting it, and will more likely fail instead. Placing mass further out from the axis of rotation greater affects the moment of inertia. The second factor is this kind of made-up term called bite, which is a measure of how well you can transfer that energy into your opponent. Having more of the tooth of the weapon engage with the opponent helps ensure that more of the energy is transferred. This can be thought of like a bike wheel. Brushing your hand against it wouldn't hurt much, but wouldn't slow the wheel down much either. Compared to jamming your hand into the spokes, which will most probably stop it from spinning, it's also going to hurt a bunch. Having less teeth allows for more of your opponent to travel into your weapon radius per revolution, leading to more engagement, or, as you can see, a bar with half as many impactors can spin twice as fast for the same rate of teeth passing by. This lets you spin twice as fast as a simpler bar which has two impacts, which again gives you more energy as kinetic energy increases with the square of speed. Having basically optimized my blade's geometry for bite, the only other way to optimize further apart from compromising on RPMs would actually be to drive faster. Thus, feeding my opponent into the blade faster, or improving my drive, will actually make my hits bigger and better than before. With the theory and main idea out of the way, it was time to consider if this was even possible. Exactly how were we going to get this new version under weight? There was a fair bit of weight to be found in the chassis, as it was 20mm tall with 5mm of air-gapped TPU above and below the electronics. 
This was mainly done in an effort to stop subdivide at all costs. However, the polycarbonate sheets had proven themselves, so we could remove this and significantly reduce the total height of the TPU to roughly 14mm. This meant the 1806 weapon motor would no longer fit, and I would have to move down to an 1804. But this wasn't all bad, as we save another 11 grams, and 11 grams in a bot weighing a total of 150 is nothing to sneeze at. Moving from N20 gear motors for drive down to N10s would save me another 4 grams between the pair. Downgrading the drive motors in a redesign all about improving drive might seem counterintuitive, however, these N10s would be the high quality wrangle box ones, which actually outperform the current N20s in basically every way. Finally, getting rid of the DF Robot drive ESCs and the receiver for the all-in-one board from Llamaforge helped simplify the wiring and the weight of the electronics. With these changes, I should have enough weight for the redesign. Designing the new chassis was pretty quick keeping the carbon fibre weapon mounts and bringing in and arranging the rest of the electronics, I drew up a main sketch in Fusion which I could extrude, chuck in some chamfers and fillets, and we're mostly done. One thing I did have to keep in mind was the centre of gravity, as this would ideally be as close to the centre of the wheelbase as possible. I brought the front wheels up to the sides of the weapon, with nitrile belts running back to the driven rear wheels. Other than the new chassis and wheels, if I was to upgrade the blade from titanium to a steel like Hardock 600, the design would also change. Hardock 600 is basically indestructible at this weight class, so we could do away with the double-sided tooth in exchange for this very scary shape. After printing everything I could, it was again off to get the blade cut from Hardock 600 by James. The part was cut and finished really nicely, but I kind of forgot that I planned to do this whole YouTube thing, so this is the only photo before it went into battle. All that was left was the assembly and tests which confirmed that we were indeed underweight. Apparently our weight savings were such that even with me misremembering the thickness of the weapon by an extra millimeter resulting in a 40 gram weapon rather than 30, we were somehow still under 150 grams. So here it is. Yellow and Dangerous Mark II, with a thinner TPU chassis, 40 gram Hardock 600 weapon, improved drive motors, a four wheel drive setup, new weapon motor, and improved electronic system. Getting the pulleys on the wheels and the belts at the right tension was a tricky process. I still don't think I've got it quite right. On the plus side, our changes seem to work out, with the four wheel drive setup driving really well and I even had to limit the speed down in the transmitter as it was too fast for me to handle given the jump up from Mark 1. Yellow and Dangerous Mark 2 has competed three times so far with some other smaller grudge fights and some very interesting new projects too. So those videos are coming. See you then.